A beam has three different load configurations. The simplest is the point load situation. The only issue with this is, is the reason that we use this is because typically with every item, three-dimensional item, you have a contact area. This is this pin makes that. The distance is small, but you still have an X and Y contact area. So when we're trying to apply a load to a beam, that contact area provides us difficulties when we're trying to exact dimensions. So what we use is something referred to as a point load, which is infinitely small. So you actually now can then dimension that because it is infinitely small. So a point load is what we're going to use for this class, um, but that's the thing that we're going to bring it back to. Next thing we have is a distributed load. The easiest way to describe this is think about when you have a bridge and you have even pavement and cement and rebar across the whole bridge. Nothing's more irregular than that. Everything's the same. So that's called an evenly distributed load. Now, if you have traffic on anything like that, then you have an unevenly. So this is a dis evenly distributedly, and this is an uneven. Even, uneven. So depending upon what you calculate, since you're taking the sum underneath the curve, good old Calc 2 for you, you're going to bring it back to the point load. So once again, we're trying to bring back the simple configuration. So that's how we do loads. All right, so we talked about the cross-sectional shape, talked about the support configuration, that's the load configuration. That's all the assessment with the beam. Okay, in terms of assessing that deflection, what I originally talked about, we have to measure inertia, okay? Inertia is the measures about, ugh, measure of a body's ability to resist bending, rotating, moving, any type of movement, essentially what it is. So what that means is, let's just say for an example, we'll take, take the little pen here. If I apply a force here, okay, if I was able to balance this right here, it's going to fall over, okay? However, there is a small amount of force I can push into it where it won't fall over. Okay, so what we're trying to measure is how much can this resist in terms of force? Okay, so what that means is we look at that measure because as soon as we know that quantity has been hit, things are going to move, whatever, we're, whatever object we're trying to analyze. Okay, so the inertia is going to be assessed and then that moment of inertia is going to be a measure of how much we need to then jump over that resistance. And so then we're gonna be calculating the moment of inertia for our box hollow H and I beam, okay? So, inertia is pretty straightforward in terms of calculating it. We're doing it around the x-axis, that's why we have I of x here. That's our bending axis to go back to that, okay? BH cubed over 12, okay? Here are your variables. The most important thing is that the bending axis is symmetrical to your object. Okay, so BH cubed over 12, this is your object. So as an example, I want you to try, calculate that of a box. This right here is four inches, that's six inches. Please don't forget your units. 